everybody. I am starting with this blank um, uh, table thing so that I can show you my new uh, Lazy Susan Center idea. Um, I had had that big one um, that used to be like a magnetic board, but it got really, it was too big because it would come, it was just too big. So I took the Lazy Susan off that and I attached it to this. And this is just a shelf from an old entertainment center um, that I kept the boards because you never know when you're going to need it. And I can, I can guarantee 100% that when I saved it, I was not thinking I was going to turn it into a Lazy Susan for acrylic boring. That I can guarantee you. But I did. So, you know, maybe, maybe my dad and has something to it because he doesn't throw anything away. His basement is full of everything. My son won't throw anything away. My husband won't throw anything away. I still throw stuff away. Um, but like in cleaning out cupboard, uh, the upstairs hallway the other day, I found this huge roll of um, crap paper that I must have bought when my kids were little. So this paper is probably 10 years old and it will work magnificently. Um, I also found a giant roll of, uh, it's brown paper, it's thicker than craft paper. I don't know uh, what it, what it's from or where I got it, but um, that's, I put it under here for the last pour I did, but it was really thick. Well, so this is, this is nice. Um, so I've got this, I believe this is a 10 by 10. It looks approximately 10 by 10 ish. And I am planning to do a ribbon pour. Wait, no, that's not it. Okay, this is what's in my brain. When there are little bits left in my flip cups and when I pour white into it and I fill in spaces, I love that look where you just see little lines of color. And so I've been trying to figure out how I can get an entire canvas like that. Um, Cause I could fill up little, I could fill up these and then dump them out and refill and dump and refill and dump. And that might be the only way. I'm going to try that. That's what I'm going to try. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to do a ribbon pour. Cause you've seen in a lot of my videos where I'll do a flip and drag and then I'll refill this with white and add it. And, and it always looks cool. So let's just see, let's just see where this takes us today. And we'll play from there. So this is from the last pour I did, the last video that seemed to take 30 hours. Um, and I ended up going from this whole canvas of stuff to just very light color. So there might not even be enough color in this one. All right, so then I am going to, oh boy, this is a really tough one. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think, let's see. I think if I add a little color, let's see. And a little white. this is so far. This might not be what I'm really wanting. It's worth it to keep going to see where this takes me. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, we're getting somewhere. Don't know where. And it may be, the end result may not be good, but experimenting is always good. Also, the colors I keep ending up with, I mean, I'm adding the colors to the exact same cup, so each color is going to have more and more of the previous color. exploration. Totally worth it. Because I have been wanting to try that forever. And now I have. And now I know. And I'm sure had I planned it this part, I mean, I had the idea in my head, but I'm sure had I uh, executed it a little more carefully, maybe. Um, I think what I'd have to do next time I try it is to have a bunch of these already set up and mixed with the colors one by one. And, um, or put a cap on every flip cup I do the re remainder and then reuse those like the following day. That might be a better idea. Um, so now that I've got all this stuff out, let's, let's just make a pour. I'm not even sure what all colors I'm using, but let's do something pretty or ugly because lately a lot of stuff's been ugly. Lost my canvas mojo. The more circle pours I've been doing. wanting to float anymore.
not good cells. Not the good kind. Those are like the two busy little ones. So I spread out the white right there so that this stuff would hopefully glide over it more easily. And it seems to be helping. When in doubt, use shades of blue and green together because um, they will always come out and they will always look good. It's kind of a can't miss combo. Look at that cell that's just blossoming, literally. I did not tape the back of this one, so this will be, this will have a messy back. Yikes, that was a little much right there. I've got a lot of paint that needs to come off, unfortunately. But we can't decide where. I'm not sure about this part.
Slowly, slowly. I can't decide. Where I want it to go. Just change the whole There we go. Put some white on this edge. Whoa. See, this is how I often do my edges. They're usually very messy, and the edges almost are their own paintings. Um, sometimes I'll have like where it perfectly drapes over, but then other times I just kind of make it, as I said, into their own little painting so that when you look at my pieces from any angle, you're seeing something new and something different. So that hopefully it never is a boring piece. Just gonna do a little bit. Chappy lately. Alrighty. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. There's a close-up of it. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.